not all homeless people are are drug addicts, but really, can you blame them for doing drugs or needing a drink? I mean, most of us are ready to pound a fifth of whiskey because we got cut off in traffic, right? Most of us would take a hit of heroin if we didn't find the right kind of cheese we wanted at the grocery store. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episode you're about to check out here. Uh, As you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, These shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com and that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Chris Mohan so if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums you can check out uh, all of the past v- episodes of this show uh, my interview podcast taboo table talk and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time so again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. So it's been roughly about a year since this pandemic has started, and we've learned a lot about each other as a society, right? You know, we've learned that a lot of people uh, don't understand how air works, you know? Some people seem to believe that if you cover your nose with a piece of cloth, it will hinder you from breathing. And this means superheroes like Spider-Man, the Hooded Justice, the Black Panther, are all suffocating as they fight crime. (laughs) Which which I guess is what makes them super. I I don't know. I just thought maybe it was the super strength and their, you know, morality. But what do I know? Or, or the other thing they do is like, if you take your mask off, it'll help you hear better, right? Yeah. The amount of people I've heard say, wait, let me take my mask off so I can hear you better is staggering. Too many people. Uh, and by that, I mean, there was one guy that did it and that's too many people to do it. <laughs> which is, which just goes to show that a lot of people don't have an understanding of the human respiratory system or ears. They don't know how ears work. Very different things, right? We've also learned that a majority of jobs don't need us to sit in traffic all morning, right? And then sit in a cubicle in a gray building and be forced to talk about fucking Game of Thrones at the water cooler, you know? Like, yes, yes, I saw the tits on the show, Jerry. And no, I don't want to discuss it because you make it weird. You make it weird all the time. You don't need to describe the tits, Jerry. I have eyes and they work just fine. Basically, what we've learned is that most of us can do our jobs from home without pants, which I think is the biggest takeaway from this pandemic. But one of the biggest things this pandemic has taught us is uh, that capitalism is genuinely awful. It's shown us how truly awful capitalism is. Right. Uh, Thanks to capitalism, a system that claims to eradicate poverty and ensure that every citizen has the access to money, is well fed and fully ejaculated. America 
is due to see unprecedented levels of homelessness. During the pandemic, there's a lot of people who couldn't who couldn't work, period, or pivot their jobs to a virtual setting, or their hours got sucked, uh, cut to less than part-time work. These people look to the government to, you know, do their jobs in providing economic relief directly to their citizens, which is why we have governments. But the government did respond, and they responded by giving $6 trillion to Wall Street and the banking industry. That's that's where they went to. And Americans were then told to stay at home, right? Unless you had to take care of the essentials. You know, the really important stuff like groceries, medications, booze, the real important shit. Look, I'm pretty sure the fact that booze is in America's amendments twice makes it essential. Soon, we'll probably add weed to that list as well. And quite frankly, I think we should have legalized weed when the term jazz cigarette went out of fashion in 1946. (laughs) We should have done it then. But because there was no economic relief directly to citizens uh, and the eviction moratoriums were coming and going constantly, capitalism created a situation where Americans were going to be put out into the street as a new wave of homelessness. And much like new wave music, this will also be a fucking disaster. (laughs) One person that knows what new wave is. Great. Uh, (laughs) Look, the oddity with this situation is the fact that the government wanted us to be locked in our homes with no financial support. And now we're creating an economic system where a bunch of us are going to be out on the streets due to no financial support. It's like, make up your minds, right? Well, are, are we supposed to stay in or are we supposed to be out on the streets? Stay at home orders don't work when you don't have a home. It's kind of important for the, you know, the home part of stay at home. But look, a lot of folks chastised the homeless population and blamed the issue on the victim rather than identifying the economic forces involved to push someone to live under the bridges, so to speak. It's this, this sort of behavior is the stop hitting yourself of reasons to hate the homeless, right? Stop impoverishing yourself. Stop impoverishing yourself. Stop impoverishing yourself. It's basically what they're doing. Right now, America has over 553,000 homeless people when you count people that live in their cars, couch surf, and other makeshift accommodations. At any given time, there are probably at minimum at least 500,000 homeless people across the nation. Now, compare that to Japan, where they have a total of 4,000 homeless people. And again, America proves that it is number one. It just, it just doesn't care what it's number one in. Yeah. They just, don't, they just don't give a shit as long as they're number one, right? USA, USA, USA. Nobody chanted with me? Come on. <laughs> 70% of the homeless population are individuals, right? We're just average people living out there. About 30% are families, and yes, some of them even have kids. 37% of the homeless population are in dire need of housing and help. Black, brown, and LGBTQ folks are the majority of homeless when you, when you tally it all up. 17% of the homeless population are veterans. Look, I have a rule, and I feel like it's a pretty good, pretty good rule, right? I think for serving in rich people's wars, the veteran homelessness should be 0%, right? I think there should be an Iraq War veteran living with Dick Cheney, Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, the Bushes, the Rockefellers, and so on. They should just be living at their house nonstop, and all of these assholes should be waiting on that veteran hand (laughs) in foot. Amen. (laughs) Day in and day out. That's what they should do. Whatever fucking request they have, these people fulfill it. In fact, I think we should go as far as to say that these veterans are allowed to fire one round of buckshot at Dick Cheney anytime... (laughs) Just like once a day, you know, 
not to I'm not an I'm not a dick not to fatally wound him or anything, but just so he knows what they went through, you know. And then Dick Cheney will apologize to the veteran. I feel like that's a pretty good rule. Pretty good rule, you guys. Now, homelessness to this scale is a result of Reaganomics. And really, yeah, really, uh, yeah right. I mean, are we surprised by this at all? Right. Oh, man, a mediocre actor turned out to be one of the worst presidents America ever had. <laughs> oh, color me shocked. And then Reagan can imprison me uh, because shocked is a different color than white. Uh, and white is the only acceptable color <laughs> under a Reagan regime. So, and not just that, Barack Obama actually once said that if he could have voted in the 80s, he would have voted for Reagan. My Look, God. <laughs> yeah, he said that in an interview at one point, uh, you know, when he was making fun of progressives on the street and saying that defund the police is a quippy slogan. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how fun, the fun things that he says now? I Look, have no idea. The, the amount of proof that we live in a corporate oligarchy at, ruled by one party is stacking higher and higher, isn't it? Ronald Reagan is the I'm not racist, but of presidents. That's what he is. Now, under the Reagan regime, public and affordable housing programs, along with a lot of social safety nets, were cut. Mix that with stagnant wages, with little or no raises, increased costs of livings, and corporations moving their factories overseas to get cheap laborers and enrich themselves, you've got yourself a recipe for record high homeless rates. But people can absolutely be callous towards the homeless, right? More often than not, people ignore the homeless as if they weren't really even there. You know, it's like it's like when a really well-endowed woman enters an all boys school, right? Everyone's like, just look at the floor. Just look at the floor and take deep breaths. It'll all be over in a minute. For fuck's sake, is it gone? Are they gone? <laughs> yeah. The only one that stares is Jerry, the, who grows up to be the guy at the water cooler, awkwardly describing breasts <laughs> to everyone. That's <laughs> Now, people think that the homeless are drains on society cashing in on their welfare checks on booze and drugs, much like this former Oregon resident. Yeah. Oh boy. Why is Oregon becoming a location, central gathering point for homeless druggies? I think it's probably just uh, the welfare programs and stuff that they're giving them. And uh, I, I heard that like, up north in Seattle, I know they give out tents. And I think there's got to be something like that going on here because I'm like, I don't know where they're getting all their, their tents. I, obviously, it's like super easy to get stamps and welfare and, and all this. It's, it's not that easy to get signed up for these <laughs> programs without an address. It's not super easy, period. Yeah. But there's, you know, it's just hard to find food. It's hard to get a job without an address, without a shower, to be clean, to have clean clothes, you know, have a mailing address. It's just, what do you put on an application? I just want out of here. I don't, this isn't home sweet home. Not just that, but try being a housed immigrant trying to get on Medicaid, defining and redefining citizenship and explaining what a fucking green card is once every 40 seconds. It's exhausting. Okay. Very, very tiresome. But that's not all. This guy goes on to say even more callous stuff about homeless people. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is this cracks me up. So there's a thing that uh, people are doing like crazy. So uh, our uh, our bottles our our bottles have a ten cent deposit on them here. So what tons of the homeless people do? They they give them like they'll give them like a flat of uh, like a crate of bottles, and they'll take them to where they recycle, and they'll dump all the water out and turn in the cans just to get a couple bucks to go get some booze or some drugs or whatever. Yeah, trying to sell bottles for, you know, only booze and drugs. What about food? Not all homeless people are, are drug addicts, but really, can you blame them for doing drugs or needing a drink? I mean, most of us are ready to pound a fifth of whiskey because we got cut off in traffic, right? Most of us would take a hit of heroin if we didn't find the right kind of cheese we wanted at the grocery store. 
Look, these people survive in rough conditions day in and day out. So if they want a little booze to take the edge off of callous statement like Craig's here, then fucking go for it. I'll pour you the first damn shot. Cheers. Besides, don't forget, alcohol is essential in America. Very essential. <laughs> But people like this often call homeless people drains on society, but then they champion people like Jeff Bezos, Tim Cook, the Waltons, and Bill Gates. Those guys are the real drains to society. They don't pay taxes. They are creating the homeless crisis by pushing for deregulation on all private industries, creating monopolies, and keeping wages stagnant. These people are the real drains in America. And therein lies the next reason for homelessness in America, the stagnation of wages. In America, minimum wage hasn't increased in over a decade. Look, that's like if you were watching the show Friends and every episode was Ross and Rachel dating and then they go on a break and then they start dating again for 10 straight years on a loop over and over again. But at least Friends had the decency to stop that shit after nine years, you know? Good for them. With stagnant wages and corporate, uh, uh, corporations skirting labor laws by hiring part-time workers, most Americans have to get two to three jobs just to survive. And then even then, some people don't. A fair amount of homeless people are employed. They just don't make enough money to afford a vehicle to take them to work and a home to house them. And that's not their fault. That's the fault of every CEO, corporate stooge, and politician that lacks the will to increase the minimum wage to a livable amount because they need to satiate their fucking greed. The billionaires and the CEOs and the purchase politicians are the real addicts in this situation. What are they addicted to? Money. That's what they're addicted to. But guys, look, don't worry. I know I'm making a mountain out of a molehill because there's kind of sort of slightly, maybe not really a chance that the minimum wage will go up to $15 an hour from $7.25 by 2025. You know, maybe, I don't know. That'll be roughly five years too late to be 10 years too late, which for the math fans out there means it's 15 years too late for the fight for 15. The wage issue and the cost of living is one of the major reasons why cities like Seattle, San Diego, and San Francisco are seeing an increase in their homeless population. Look, when I was in San Francisco a few years ago, the city streets were filled with homeless people. They didn't panhandle, they didn't ask me for money, but they did give me a look like, well, shit, you probably don't have any money either. Which, you know, they were right. I didn't. <laughs> But despite my lack of in income, I, I, you know, my lack of money, I'd still try to give something to the homeless folks, food, water, some cash if I have it. And this is something I get chastised. Uh, I get chastised for this by my friends all the time, right? They look at me and they go, well, Chris, you have no money. If you keep giving them money or food, what's left for you? And sure, that might be true. But, you know, right now I have a little bit more than them, so it's okay. And if I do wind up being homeless... When they're, uh, when they're off the streets in their homes, I'm hoping that they will give me a dollar when I ask for it. Amen. Yeah. That is called the circle of life. Hmm. Another reason why people try to avoid the homeless is because, well, they all have mental illnesses. And that's not really true either, right? I mean, some do have mental illnesses and are in dire need of some kind of help. But after really being ignored by most of humanity, let's be honest we'd all go a little crazy, right? Just just so people would acknowledge your existence. And if you don't go a little crazy, th that I kind of feel like is even crazier. <laughs> have you have you ever gotten a silent treatment from your partner or or your significant other or or like your cat? You know, like after a while you start wondering if you really exist or have you become Patrick Swayze from the movie Ghost? Being homeless is that feeling 100% of the time. And which one of us can really claim that we don't have any mental illnesses, right? Everyone is a little crazy. Look, I myself am a hyper anxious dude 
with PTSD from an emotionally abusive relationship. And I decided comedian was going to be my full-time job. <laughs> I'm at minimum 66% crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Another major cause of homelessness is uh, prisoners who are, who are let out with absolutely nothing to their name. They're discriminated against uh, for getting a lot of jobs and can't find a stable home and then therefore wind up in prison or end up homeless, which then also winds them back in prison. Regardless of what happens, the prison system is set to recycle prisoners in America, which is the only green initiative this fucking country believes in. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some folks out there that prefer the unhoused lifestyle. Right? They live out of their cars and they're nomads and they travel through the land. Yeah, they, they either hustle on the street or get temporary gigs as they travel around. Uh, and those folks are part of the homeless population too. But their reasons are often used as a scapegoat to not help the homeless. Right? How many times have you heard people go, oh, well, they chose that way to, of life. You know, They chose to be out there and they made their choices and now they have to stick with it. But the reality is the homelessness problem was created and escalated by capitalism. You can't run an economic system built on greed for the few and ex expect the majority to benefit. This is an unequal system and it will continue to create further inequalities till most of us are homeless and working for a Mezo Mart sponsored by Micro Apple. But as if the negative stigmas against homelessness weren't enough, don't worry. Most states have basically made it illegal to be homeless. And I might be going on a huge limb here, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel like if we're going to make homelessness illegal, it should also be double illegal to create that fucking problem. Right now, landlords have filed over 160,000 eviction notices in 27 cities alone during the pandemic. Look, at this point, shouldn't we all just call landlords that want to evict people in the middle of a pandemic super spreaders, considering that their actions will likely lead to folks getting COVID-19? Right now, the homeless population has some of the highest risks of catching and spreading COVID. And American capitalism wants to create more of them, proving that capitalism is the ultimate virus. Number one, right? From spikes under bridges to making park benches less accessible, state after state is making homelessness illegal instead of finding actual solutions to the problem. And I'm not sure what the expectation there is. Like, do they expect homeless people to see these spikes and just go, oh, boy, well, shit, they got me here, huh? Well, I guess I'll just go back to that apartment I've been holding out on and give up on this Jack Kerouac fantasy here. No hobo life for me. <laughs> What is the fucking point? Look, and things are so desperate for the homeless sometimes that they commit petty crimes so that they can be hauled away to a jail cell just to get a bed for a night or two. 18% of Alaskans who are homeless live unsheltered. Now, a lot of people here will just commit a petty crime to get thrown in jail intentionally so they're warm. And then they get out and then they do it all <laughs> over again. A system that requires people to break laws to get a bed and two square meals is a broken fucking system. The most insane of anti-homeless laws are the ones that make feeding the homeless illegal. And there are multiple states that have decided to make it illegal to feed the homeless. And I can understand Florida making feeding the homelessness illegal, right? I get that, you know, because... They're shaped like a dick and henceforth they'll act like one, you know? <laughs> but the rest of the states, they don't have an excuse. They don't have an excuse at all. Fortunately, there are organizations that have resisted this law from the dark ages. One of them being the organization called Food Not Bombs. And since the 1980s, they have been arrested by cops on multiple occasions for feeding the homeless and even battled with politicians like Nancy Pelosi to ensure that the homeless are just taken care of. And things got so bad in the early days of Food Not Bombs that volunteers had to send decoy food to outsmart the cops. We would um, sneak food in through parking garages and so on. 
Um, the decoy food would get arrested. Um, then there'd be a second wave of decoy food that'd get arrested. And then we'd come with all the food. Now, the only time they, they we used to have another program called uh, Risk Arrest One Day a, a Month with Food Not Bombs. And so we'd have community groups that would come and, and get arrested. Um, and so there was like, uh, you know, anarchist groups and so on. But when the Lawyers Guild came out, they just arrested the people that came to eat instead and uh, didn't arrest the lawyers. Now, the issue the cops had with food, not bombs, was a lack of permits, right? So that's what they did. They went and got some permits. Well, they say that we don't have a permit. But after a huge... As, as if in the so-called freest country in the world, which is bullshit, but as if in the freest country in the world, you should have to get a permit to give someone food. Yeah, to get permission. So that San Francisco, that was... Um, we litigated in state and federal court. Um, we uh, we, we uh, played their game to the T to prove that it had nothing to do with a permit. And, uh, and so after uh, um, even maybe two years or so, eventually it became clear that there was a no, that that wasn't the issue. They didn't want people, they didn't want the public to see us feeding people and doing it on our own without any uh, interaction with the government, not needing their, you know, there was, this was the most liberal Democrats, this is Nancy Pelosi and, and those people, Feinstein, right? And, uh, you know, they're supposed to be making sure everybody has food, but yet they have like all these thousands of people living outside on the streets, outside their office building, and we're feeding them. And so it kind of puts a, a, um, a bad look on liberal Democrats to be feeding right. people out on the streets. Right. I think uh, Noam Chomsky coined the expression, the threat of the good example. Yeah. Human beings are uncomfortable with just general niceness for the sake of niceness, aren't we? In a society built on hyper-individualism and paranoia, kindness is seen as criminal behavior instead of just an example we can all live by. Yikes. <laughs> right? Yeah, look, a major reason the elected officials didn't want food not bombs to feed people is after people eat, they poop. We, um, you know, they would say, well, we got to get rid of food not bombs. They're feeding people. And then afterwards, they poop. And this is a nightmare. So we've got to get rid of food up on. What? So, they, wait, so, you're, you're telling me that eating results in something afterwards? Yeah. So this was so such a, a, a shocker that um, we thought, well, we'll just rent a portable toilet then. Well, it didn't take but one afternoon for the city to come and confiscate the port portable toilet. <laughs> there you have it, folks. We did it. OK, there is now an official government order that says everybody poops. OK, look, I'm glad that our elected officials are answering the tough questions. Okay, take that, Neil deGrasse Tyson, with your fucking cosmos and, and telescopes. Right. The government just answered one of the largest questions in the universe. Do we all poop? And, <laughs> and the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. We sure do all poop. All right. So, so let's pack it up. I think we're done here. Let's get these people a raise and we'll, we'll move on to the next problem. Another excuse that the oligarchs had with food, not bombs, was that feeding the homeless was unhygienic. The argument was that it's not uh, it's not hygienic. It's not sterile or something to be feeding people. It's uh, safe. Yeah. Look. If they think feeding the homeless is unhygienic, uh, then they've never been at a mosh pit at a thrice concert. Okay, that is that's filled with sweat and spit <laughs> and blood. Never worked in a restaurant either. Yeah. Okay, which is also filled with sweat and spit, exactly. and blood <laughs> and ejaculate, and sometimes probably <laughs> also poop because. <laughs> because some of the songs they play are very loud and, and startling. <laughs> so, look, Food Not Bombs does not encourage people to go dumpster diving. They recommend that you get your food from grocery stores and restaurants that would throw the food away in excess. 40% of the food globally goes to waste. Globally, 40% goes to waste. And most of that food is still good to eat. So why not let it go to those that need it instead of the dumpster? 
right? Food Not Bombs is alleviating one of the most stressful aspects of homeless life, finding food. And this idea is so radical and dangerous that the FBI spied on them and deemed them one of the most dangerous terrorist organizations in the country. So, yeah, we have, uh, I've had a bit of interest in, uh, in FBI surveillance since we've been the target. Uh, there was a State Department uh, lecture at Tufts University in uh, April of 2009 where they compared the people that serve free vegan meals in the uh, parks to Al Qaeda, who's more dangerous? And um, they <laughs> determined that Al Qaeda probably would not last another 30 years, but the people with the ve serving the vegan meals would probably go on another 30, which is uh, um, going to be true. And uh, and the um, and that they are indigenous to their communities, they're loved by the local people, and that the uh, community might insist that the military spending be diverted to education, healthcare, and other social services. Dear and, God, if, if that were to happen, <laughs> all is lost. Yes. It is. So, uh, you know, I got blacklisted uh, on uh, 9-14 after 9-11. I was uh, uh, banned from working in the United States after that. And, um, you know, so it's been some pretty they, interesting how things. How did they justify that? They said that I was the founder of, an, of a terrorist organization called Food Not Bombs. <laughs> that uh, was trying to undermine the, um, uh, the uh, military by encouraging people to think money should go to food and not to bombs. Um, that was the problem there. <laughs> Look, I know, okay, I'm, I'm laughing at how ridiculous that is, but I, I, there, there might be some folks that are, are shocked by this, right? But don't forget, the FBI started getting more aggressive towards the Black Panthers after they successfully started feeding kids. The FBI is basically anti-food and at this point serves absolutely no purpose, right? Look, the FBI is worse than Marie Antoinette, all right? At least that bitch wanted people to eat cake. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> But look, you got states like California that are breaking up homeless encampments that have sprung up. I mean, for fuck's sake, guys, what the hell do you want these people to do, right? They can't afford housing because you need to be Google rich to live there and you ruin park benches. So, yeah, they started camping. You know, if cops and politicians really hate these homeless encampments, a simple solution would be to cancel rents instead of bailing out the banks for six trillion dollars and approving an eight hundred dollars billion dollar military budget that could have covered people's rents for a year or like 12. That's an astronomical amount of money. Look, I have a rule and I think it's a pretty good rule. Uh, you can bail out the banks and Wall Streets for upwards of six trillion dollars, but all the debt has to be erased and rent should be paid up by the banks, right? I think that's not a bad rule. I think they should pay uh, one year of uh, one year worth of rent for every war that they funded. Not too bad, right? I think it's a pretty fair trade off. You know, you want war and government handoff uh, handouts, then that's great. We want no rents and no debt. And yes, we all will get to shoot Dick Cheney in the face with buckshot just once, right? I feel like that's that's a fair <laughs> fair trade off. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and look, everybody just chill out, right? He'll be fine. All right. He's got Rush Limbaugh's heart now. He's going to be okay. The reality is that making homelessness and food illegal isn't a solution to fix this problem. That's like stubbing your toe on the chair and then kicking that chair. You haven't fixed the fucking problem, and now your leg is bleeding. That's what's happening. If America wants to fix the homelessness problem, they're going to have to stop kicking them when they're already down. And since homelessness is such a massive problem, it needs a pretty massive and bold solution. And some states are coming up with, with a solution. For example, New York City a city that some say is uh, the greatest city on the planet, has a program where they pay homeless people's rent for a year 
if they go to New Jersey. They actually get caught schlepping their homeless people across the river in New Jersey. New Jersey people apparently don't like that very much. The state of New York pays for a year of rent in another state as long as you don't come back. Apparently, it's cheaper to just move them into New Jersey than it is to keep them within their own city limits. A year of rent for free. Can you imagine that? They also buy them one-way tickets to get the homeless people the hell out of their city. No questions asked. Just leave. <laughs> Look, I know now some of you guys are wondering, well, why not just pay for rent a, you know, for a year in New York City? But they don't really want poor people living in the greatest city on earth. <laughs> I mean, what do you think this is, Atlanta huh? or Chicago, you know, or, or, or Cleveland or St. Louis or Pittsburgh? You guys get the idea of what I'm doing here. You guys get it. Look, even the cops in New York City are tired of going after the same homeless people, and they're encouraged to buy them a one-way bus ticket out of town. This is, a, this is a viable solution that they encourage cops to do, right? Displace the displaced because making the problem exponentially works has always benefited America, right? I guess this is, this is really not what people meant when they said fight fire with fire. I mean, New York City is literally saying, forget about it to the homeless. And that is the best New York City accent I can do uh, so don't, <laughs> not an accents guy, <laughs> but New York city has also deregulated rents, right? But those that already live in the apartments are grandfathered in and don't have to worry about rising rents, but don't worry there. There's a way that we can fuck these people right in the face. Rent control is supposed to provide affordable housing, but only for people who are actually in the building to begin with. If somebody moves out, you can charge the next guy whatever you want. So there's landlords in New York City that are incentivized to have you move out. Maybe by not fixing stuff or not killing the rats or the roaches. And then when you move, the next guy comes in and he has to pay more than you paid. And so these landlords can charge whatever the heck they want. So they wait for somebody to come along that'll pay a lot of money. And so all these units are left vacant for a long time. And look, I mean, New York City is really the greatest city in the world for exploitative capitalists or if you want to become an exploitative capitalist i mean if you if you want to become a sociopath with no feelings there is a really fun island you can go to and practice not having feelings you know but hey uh you do get to see lion king on broadway sometimes right that's fun huh that's exciting uh, New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. It's hell. It is literally hell on earth is basically what New York City is. It is and it's not even like one of the deeper circles of hell. It's like it's not it's not even it's like the outskirts of the first circle of hell. Look, housing is the primary issue that leads to homelessness. And in this case, the problem is the solution. Various states and even nations have been putting forth the Housing First program, which simply gets homes for the homeless. That's it. That's the whole program. That's how simple it is to fix this problem. In America, there are two different types of Housing First options. The permanent support housing is for uh, people that are chronically or permanently homeless. And this way, uh, they can have a home and they can focus on getting cleaned up, getting mental health services, and learn how to get a job. The second is called rehousing. And this is for those that need a little bit of time to get back on their feet. And look, for those that are going to sit there and say, well, this is a handout, let's think of it a little bit differently. Housing first is the boots that these people need to pull themselves up by. Look, you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps if you don't have any fucking boots to begin with. Okay, Most likely because the cops took your boots away uh, when they arrested you for peeing on a bank. Which I think, uh, legally, we should all be allowed to do once a day. Should all be peeing on banks. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm at. If I was running for office, that would be like my one big thing. I would be like, everybody gets to piss on a bank, and I, I feel like I would win. Uh, anyway... <laughs> 
Housing First gives homeless people a leg to stand on rather than kneecapping them from the start. In Salt Lake City, in the first year, they decreased homelessness by 90%. In other cities that they've tried this program, it's a minimum of at least 75%. And it turns out when you offer people some compassion and housing, they can focus on bettering themselves and get their lives on track. But when you put profit first, it's most likely to limit their opportunities and wreck lives. But homeless folks in the housing program have a higher likelihood of getting a job and keeping it. Their mental health improves through regular therapy and, if needed, medications. Plus, their physical health improves because they're getting regular meals and showers. And look, I know. I know, right? Everybody's asking the really big question that they ask every time some kind of solution like this comes up. But where, well, where the money gonna come from, Chris? But where, where the, where the money gonna come from? A, a program like this significantly decreases homelessness and humanizes people for the first time in a long time. I mean, can we really put a price on that? I ask you, can we really put a price? on humanity. Some people have, and it's $20 billion. That's how much it's going to cost. Now, before people start rolling their eyes at this unthinkable rumber, remember, Wall Street got a $6 trillion handout, and our current war budget is over $700 billion. A fraction of these amounts can get people off the streets the rest can get everybody universal basic income, Medicare for all, and a pony for every American. Yeah. So when your child asks you why they can't have a pony, you let them know. It's because of the military industrial complex and the fucking bankers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Start that kid off on the radical path right. But some cities are doing something a little bit different to budget for the Housing First programs. Uh, before capitalism and climate change made Austin less weird and more inhospitable, they implemented a Housing First program whose budget came from defunding the police. Austin was housing the chronically homeless in empty hotels. Right? This would cost about $12 million to make happen. $6 million of that would come from police budgets. Following that, $6.5 million would be set aside annually to help Austin's uh, Housing First initiative, which for just one hotel would cost about $1.6 million per year to run. On top of all of that, Austin's police budget was slashed another $20 million, getting rid of cadet classes, license plate readers, uh, and the standard issue aviator sunglasses. Yeah, so now they have to get the discount gas station sunglasses, but it's all right because it gives off the same level of douchiness. So <laughs> all is still right in the world. They have, they have to wear Oakleys instead of Oakleys, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're the knockoffs. <laughs> you know, that's what they're getting now. Uh, on top of all this, there's an additional $80 million that was cut from civilian services, which are now going to be allocated to a different department. And I know, I know, this sounds like a lot, right? But remember, even after their budgets were slashed over $100 million, they still have a fuck ton of money to employ cops, right? And I know, I know, right? The reaction in the news to this sort of stuff is going to be, there's, it's just people going to be, oh man, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Crime is going to skyrocket in Austin people. Just you watch. Okay. People are just going to commit crimes. They're going to commit murders all over the place and they're going to start jacking off in the streets. That's what's going to happen. It's like, relax, buddy. Okay. Let's all take a breath. All right. Austin isn't going to get that weird. Not Congress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, the Housing First programs decrease the cost of emergency services. It saves cities approximately $31,000 per person per year. Multiply that by hundreds and thousands of people that wind up being homeless that are now being taken care of. This program is actually saving cities money. 
This means that overfunding police departments, as Joe Biden and a majority of Democrats and all of the Republicans want to do, would be doubly unnecessary and really an insult to basic math. The Housing First program has also found successes in various countries from Canada to the Czech Republic, right? In the Czech Republic, this program is primarily used to help the Roma or gypsy population re-enter the housing markets. When this program started, they were thinking the success rate would be like 80%, but since 2017, 100% of the families are still housed within the program. Not just that, but in this program, kids are given a stable environment to get a good education, the family's physical and psychological health improved, and the expenditures decrease, giving their lives some all-around stability. In Canada, places like Saskatoon can reach temperatures of minus 30 degrees. Now, harm reduction centers are designated warm spaces, uh, and because of the pandemic, they've had to cut down on their beds. So right now, they're calling for 24-7 warming spaces for the homeless. And the Housing First programs would actually fit that model. I have to say, though, I, I do find it genuinely incredible that Canadians just don't hibernate in the winter, right? Like, it falls below 50 degrees, and I just never want to leave the house, right? But I do suppose that in order to hibernate, you would like need a home. So it makes an even bigger argument for housing first in Canada. In Edmonton, Canada, this program has helped over 12,000 people since 2009 and currently houses about 1,100 people. Uh, they budgeted that 30 clients can be taken care of with about $800,000. And that's Canadian dollars. So it doesn't count. Uh, actually, in Canada, they also take booze to their clients, right? Before everybody just hops and puffs, remember that homeless people are people too, and they have the right to alcohol just like the rest of us, okay? But there's unending proof that housing first works and improves the conditions of these humans and decreases homelessness. Isn't it strange, though, that we need proof that compassion is an effective and financially sound method of addressing some of the most deepest and troubling issues that capitalism has created, further proving that capitalism is a system that creates more inequalities and thrives on it. But compassion, logic, and empathy should be our default setting. But when you have a dominant economic system that rewards cruelty, it's kind of easy to see why compassion needs to be proven as an effective solution. Housing First also puts the choice in the client's hands. That means if they don't want to, they don't have to. But there are some people who have looked at the Housing First programs and see it as unfair, right? Why should these people get a free, why should these people get free housing when the rest of us have to work hard and, and get our own homes and apartments? And look, I get it. Right? Arguments like that have been made towards ending student debt, too. The right to shelter is a basic need that should be recognized by any basic government. And yes, I'm all for housing first and canceling student debt. As someone who does work really hard for what they have and paid off those, all their student loans by being broke a lot, I'm 100% fine with the homeless, a homeless person picking their home and giving a leg up to get their lives on, back on track and canceling all of the student debt, 100% for it. And look, if this is somebody that already has a job and is now homeless and now goes into the Housing First program and doesn't have to worry about rent, even better. Maybe that'll get us right. to start realizing that the notion of rents and mortgages don't seem to make any sense in an unequal system that prioritizes profit over humanity. I mean, for fuck's sake, model UNs have come up with better ways of dealing with homelessness than the United States. I mean, we can't build a house for everybody in America because then nobody would want to work, right? Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> that is absolutely wrong. Look, work shouldn't be about earning money as a way to not lose your homes. 
And look, most workers do wind up losing their homes or their cars because of corporate deregulation and a society that's obsessed with fetishizing billionaires. It's almost like some folks can't get aroused without seeing a do dozen zeros in your bank account. And that's before the decimal point, okay? I got an infinite amount of zeros after the decimal point. But giving people a home to have less to worry about would mean that our society would be able to spend time, energy, and money coming up with innovative solutions to fix some of our most troubling problems. Right now, there could be a brilliant climate scientist homeless on a bus to New Jersey. Guys, for fuck's sake, do we really want one of the most potentially brilliant people to be stuck in New Jersey, AKA Yankee, Florida? Is that what we want? I say nay. <laughs> Look, solutions to homelessness are right at our fingertips and they don't come from making these people illegal or invisible. It comes from showing them compassion and acting out of logic. And once we do that, the profit will automatically follow if you care about that sort of thing. But first thing we need to do is give these people their humanity back by letting them have a home, a sandwich, and a beer on us. The end. Thank you guys so much for, for hanging out. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan haha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as, uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows, uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -H. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.